Hi, I'm Dmitry Feld, and uh, you are in Lake Placid, New York, home of 1932-1980 Winter Olympic Games, and home of the seventh annual I Love Barbecue and Music Festival, also home of the four annual I Love Barbecue Junior World Championship. Our event been uh, in Lake Placid for the last seven years. Uh, we are Kansas City Barbecue Society sanctioned event. Uh, one of the goals of this event to promote, of course, barbecue, uh, American style barbecue to American people, but also to raise awareness with the young children, age 12 to 15, 16 to 21. Uh, we also, one of the ideas of this event to raise funds needed funds for the junior, for the Shipment Youth Center of Lake Placid that's been operating since 1999. We love our town, we love food, we love the teams. We had really good teams coming in here. You know, we're in upstate New York, very historical town, so we are pleased to have this year BBQ TV. And, uh, you know, we want them to come back and be with us. Okay. Um, it's a three-day event. We run uh, some grilling and barbecue events before KCBS, which is going to be on Sunday, July 1st. Yesterday we had two events, Team Pool Pork Competition and High Peaks for Grilling Bash. Today we have the Best Ribs on the East. It's a uh, uh, People's Choice Award. And also we have our fourth annual Junior World Championship when young kids age uh, 12 to 15 and 16 to 21 will square off for that title. And of course, uh, main event tomorrow is Kansas City Barbecue Society Grand Championship and New York State Championship. We actually one of the few events who gets Governor Cuomo proclamation. We have 26 KCBS teams competing. We have 11 junior teams competing, so we are very happy with our numbers. Uh, we have a lot of entertainment, including BMX bikes. And of course, we have plenty of great food. What do the kids win? Okay. Uh, you know, Junior World Championship, we have two divisions, youth 12 to 15. They uh, compete in four categories, uh, pork, chicken, steak, dessert, and they win title of the youth division. Uh, we have first prize, um, I think $500, second prize $300, third prize $200 cash, and we get all kinds of prizes. And then, Junior World Championship, that's 16 to 21. We have cash prizes, first place get $1,000. And Tiffany Landin, she's a defending two-time champion, is here from Minnesota. We also get $20,000 in scholarship funds from Paul Smith College of the Adirondacks, which is a culinary school and forestry school and uh, hotel management. And $20,000 split between three places, top three. First place get 10,000 per person. Second place, 6,000, and third place, 4,000. And those money spread for four years. So if you win $10,000, you can apply $2,500 per year. And if you are vegetarian and your high school diploma is very high, they will match that too. And uh, teams come from all over the place, including Minnesota, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts. We're very happy about this, Kansas. So we're trying to grow this event to 20 to 25 teams. <laughs> I'm probably going to use that one and that one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Try not to get the bark up there. 
You don't need to get all little stuff, it's just stuff that really looks out of place, okay? Alright. Okay. Yeah. Does that work perfect? Thank you, Cindy! Get out? No. No, like after it's done. She's yeah. fine, Chloe. There you go. I get some more in my hand. Okay. Hey, no more. Come on. Hold this. Alright, you can grab my hand. Come on, Chloe. Come on, Aprons, good use of aprons. Okay, we're gonna go back down. Mom, can you open the cooker? Wait, come here. Can you clean the side? It doesn't need to be clean, Lauren. I'll clean it when we, we're we about to turn it in. Excuse me. Which one, top or bottom? Uh, bottom. No, oh, where's the butter? Butter, you're right. You're, thank you. Yeah, Sue Chef, you're supposed to be on that. I'm a sous chef, but I don't know how to make it. So. I don't know. Just give it to me. I just don't know. I'll be doing steak in a minute. Oh, it's just like the miniest thing I've ever seen. It's a great mini cute. I have, didn't turn that one on you yet. It's cute. How many more do we need? Two? Two. Okay. Here's one. Two seven. Would you stop rushing on that? I would rather be rushed than feel like late. I feel like I'm on the Food Network. <laughs> oh no, better. Barbecue TV. Oh, oh, even better. Hi, mom. Because <laughs> then you can Hi. show. Then you can show it to all your friends later. <laughs> oh, over and yeah. over again. Over and over and over. Just as long as it's not at the house, okay? Fine. It's kind awesome. of a elephant ear on that one. They're all unique, Dad. Oh. They're their individual stuff. It's like, how many pigs are identical? Lucky, None. <laughs> cool. Fifty-eight. Yep. Drop, drop. Last one. Yep.
Uh, my name is Kevin Rundell. I'm a team member of uh, one of three of the Purple Pork Masters, uh, brother-in-law Joe Girardi and team, uh, teammate uh, John Viscoliosi. Uh, we do this about, um, this year we're doing about 14 competitions, give or take. Last year we did about five, and we're, we are a team of about, we're a young team of about two and a half years. I've been barbecuing probably about 15 years total. We've just basically gotten pretty serious with it the last couple of years, as you kind of see by the equipment we have behind us. Um, it, it, it's, it's a labor of love, lots of time, um, lots of effort, um, but it's all worth it. It's lots of great people. We're in Lake Placid, New York today uh, at the old Olympic Oval. And uh, it, it's a great family event, and uh, a lot more people are getting into something like this and, and seeing how, how fun it is. Us at our Top Chef competition, uh, we have had two teams earlier today, and now we have the Purple Pork Masters, and John Vizzogioli, Viz 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 uh, I will have John uh, explain a little bit about um, how he got started, his team got started, maybe some interesting kind of sideline. Uh, and uh, I do want to mention that, of course, this, as all the other competition, is uh, all of the funds that are made from this uh, I Love Barbecue Festival is for the Shipman Youth Center, which is a very, very important organization here in Lake Placid. Very worthy, and we're so happy that you all have joined us here today, and I hope that you will enjoy John's presentation along with other of our top chef presenters. So I turn this over to John. So my name again is John. So I'll Spilliotti. actually use the microphone uh, available. Started barbecuing um, the, uh, two years ago. The, uh, the crush um, event is going on. While watching uh, on television, actually, uh, Barbecue Pitmasters. Thought it was a lot of fun. I like to cook. Um, and I had two employees that worked with me that uh, had actually competed and done them before. So I said, let's do it. Let's start our first competition. We won um, best barbecue sauce in the world uh, for our first time out in Memphis in May and placed in the top 10 percentile in all of our categories. I said, ah, oh, this looks like a lot of fun. So I started doing it and this is our third year. Um, actually our 13th competition and we've done relatively well our booth is um, over on the other side with a lot of trophies on it so you have to stop by now getting back to this how many of you have eaten lamb before oh wow so most of you excellent I mean it, it was funny because I was at the uh, the national championships in um, Washington D.C. last weekend, and half the team members of all the competing teams had never tasted lamb, and less of them had ever cooked lamb, and that was one of the categories. We'll talk about lamb for a minute here. This is what you see in your traditional grocery store rack of lamb. One of my favorites, though, is the loin chop. What this is, is basically the T-bone or a porterhouse steak that you get from beef. So this is a porterhouse cut for lamb. You just follow the bones straight down. And there you have a simple lamb chop, which they charge you $2 more per pound for this versus this. Um, I made it very simple. Olive oil, chopped garlic, mince a gar I'm not gonna do it here, I was going to do it but it's too windy. So I minced garlic finely, um, <coughs> parsley, rosemary, and some mint leaves all together. 
put them in the oil, let them sit for about an hour because what you're doing there is you're flavoring the oil. So you're not only getting, you know, those components or those flavors onto the meat, but you want to flavor the oil too. And you don't want to use too much oil. So basically, for all of this that I did, I used about a quarter quarter cup of oil. I used um, six sprigs of rosemary. I used a whole head of garlic. I used uh, five or six uh, mint leaves and a small bunch of parsley. And then of course you add salt and pepper to your taste and um, it'll create kind of a paste. And as you can see, as, as I put it on, onto the meat and rubbed it, then put it back into the refrigerator, it sticks right on. Um, usually I'll do it about two to three hours before cooking, so it penetrates the lamb. I'm not a huge fan of gamey lamb. I am. I started, I, I started off on direct heat, then I move it off to the side to indirect. And it really depends on the thickness of the cut. So on the chops, you saw that it's pretty thick. So, um, I'll start it off and then move it faster than if I was just doing a lamb chop that I showed you, I just do that direct heat because it cooks so fast. John, what kept it on? What was the nice here? You said the whole clove of lamb, um, garlic, the whole head? Yeah. yeah, the whole bulb. I like garlic. <laughs> <laughs> This goes it's at, okay, it's on the recipe, it's also on the board over there that was the only thing you could put that paste on, otherwise you're going to take it away. Um, and the other thing is that the name of the, uh, of the team is the Purple Clock Nasty. That could also go on the scorecard. Now, in terms of, um, in terms of your point, My name's Josh, I'm retail manager at the Wild Center in Tupper Lake, New York. And I'm Dave St. Ange. I'm the Facilities Manager for the Wild Center in Tupper Lake. And we are a Natural History Museum, we focus on the flora and fauna of the Adirondack Park. And today we have uh, our maple products, which support our educational maple uh, programs that we do at the museum. Maple cotton candy, made with real maple sugar. Maple syrup and maple barbecue sauce. So it's a Natural History Museum located in Tupper Lake, 30 miles west of here. Um, we have uh, live animals. Uh, a lot of education. Uh, we're a science center. We have a new uh, experience there, the Planet Adirondack, which is a uh, six-foot sphere that uh, has four projectors that project an image on it. It's from NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It has live data sets so that you can do lifetime weather, um, uh, hurricane tracking, uh, all sorts of educational things. It's really neat. Great thing to see. We started our maple project to uh, educate uh, the town of Tupper Lake about, uh, about the, the, the sweetness, the, the great things that can come from our local trees. Uh, we tapped over 100 trees in our community. We boiled syrup, or pardon me, sap from the local community, and then we gave it all back uh, to, our, uh, to our Tupper Tappers, as we call them. And, uh, and then the end result here as well is that we were able to bottle some and, and sell it, and the proceeds benefit the Wild Center. My name is Harry Landine. I am with uh two different teams here. One is Pepper Q Barbecue Team, which is a uh, my sister's team. It's a junior team that competes here at Lake Placid. This is our third year coming to the contest. We enjoy it every year. The other team that I'm part of is Swedish Pig Barbecue Team. It is our family team that we've been competing with for the last three years as well. It's kind of uh, our current name for it. It may switch at some point, but those are the two teams that I am affiliated with at this moment and so on. We've done a few different competitions as Swedish Pig. Not too many because of uh, time constraints, but we try and compete at least four to five times a year, get around and have fun. 
and Pepper Q is kind of uh, whenever there's a youth event out or around, we'll always go for that title and name because uh, my sister's always our lead person in that regard for that. And our nice Minnesota Barbecue Society banner over here, wherever we go, we like to uh, fly our banner. Uh, my dad is the president for that, so we try and advertise that in public and they, uh, get as much publicity for it as we can. We're huge advocates of that. We feel like we are helping all the local contests in Minnesota get bigger, uh, grow stronger, and just assist them in any ways possible. It's a uh, good growing society so far. Very fun if any of you aren't members. Uh, MNBarbecueSociety.com join today very good and all that other good stuff so anytime okay hi i'm john thompson uh pit master for team Edipedia. these are my team members over here We've got paul furlot mike hines mike works in government services for the government of canada paul works also for the government as an it guy i'm an it guy this is just our passion we're not doing this professionally we work all day on keyboards and dealing with government bureaucracy so we come in here to unwind cook some barbecue and hang out with some great folks. Uh, this is our eighth. We're probably going to do about 10 contests this year. This is only our second year competing professionally. Last year was our first year competing professionally. We did about three comps. The year before we did an amateur and some, some other little events. But uh, this is our first year coming down to the States and competing in the KCBS. We've competed uh, uh, only up in Canada throughout Ontario and Quebec. And uh, it's time in, our, in the evolution of our career to come down and play in the big leagues and compete against the big dogs. And that's why we're here. It's, yeah, it's too big. Too big. Actually, well, that one's big too. I do want to do. Like this guy. Muffin <laughs> Tim. All right, a little Ooh. FYI to our team. You have about five minutes or so to get your chicken in. Dude, sure shut up. That. It seems you have about Oh, boy, oh. the time. Not freight train, but good spice. Skin did not quite bite through on this one that I just bit. Too crowded. It's it's hard because there's um, they're always so close. Like there's different flavors in each one. I'll be honest. I really like the first one and the third one. I think I just like the glaze on it and the uh, overall flavor. The first one had a little bit something different to it, um, but they're always they're always so close and sometimes it's hard to differentiate. But they always do a great job. I uh, personally liked the first one. It was a little spicy, and I do like the uh, heat. Uh, I also thought that number five was good as well. Uh, I think out of the my least favorite probably would have been number four. I myself, I like the uh, third one. I found it tender. I found it uh, flavorful. Uh, not overly spiced, not overly sauced. Uh, my least favorite was the fourth uh, one. The reason being is because it was slightly overcooked, and uh, I also found it just a little over seasoned. Uh, my favorite out of all of these was actually number five. Um, I thought it had a very good uh, overall sort of taste, tenderness, um, nice, nice little kick to it as well. My least favorite was number four. I found that there was just too much going on there. Um, and the piece I had was actually quite dry as well. Um, but overall, they, they were all pretty good. I really liked number one. It had the smokiest flavor. Number four was my least favorite. It was the sweetest. I don't care for really sweet sauce. <laughs> Yeah. 
see that little piece right there? Got some on the bottom end. There's something on the bottom end of it, just to let you know. Pretty looking ribs here. These are long. I need one more short. I think you got enough to choose from. I would get that if you can get that bark off of it. What? Right here. No. The end. These are pick whatever you want. Mm -hmm. We've got that time. Three? Okay. Yep. Hey, what time? You? Give her give her these. Right here. Come in. What's the, the time? Tell, tell her to come over around here. 1224. Come around over here. Uh, it's 1224. No. That does it. Well, we throw around. I love barbecue. Sure. Uh, I'll take your one. first rib. Um, I found that to be a nice flavor. 
it was moist, came off the bone nice and clean. One of the better of the ribs. The second one <clears throat> I found a little bit tough, but it was tasty. Um, four, eight, almost blew it again. The third rib, um, it had a, a too sweet of a taste for me. I think it was a little bit light and smokiness, and it, the tenderness um, was just average. The fourth rib I found to be the moistest and most flavorful of the ribs. And the final rib um, was way too tough, hard to judge on its taste because of its it was not tender at all. It was hard to get off the bone. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Okay. Well, I think my favorite rib was the fourth rib. Um, it had a great smoky taste, um, a nice, uh, great appearance, uh, uh, good color, uh, maybe a little hint of um, maple in the sauce, which probably works with us up here in the North Country. Um, and it was nice and tender. Uh, I, um, as far as uh, the one I probably didn't, uh, I liked the least, maybe it was the first rib. Um, it was a bit dry, over sauced, um, and a little bit on the stringy side. Um, so, uh, and in the middle, um, pros and cons with each. I think uh, generally the, um, the entries other than the fourth lacked that smoky flavor. It didn't seem that they were slow. Uh, slow cooked to at least my preferences but uh, good effort all overall thank you um, I would have to say my favorite was the second one it had a really good smoke flavor to it it was quite tender and it was quite easy to chew the first one presented in the uh, box quite wet and sloppy and it gave you the appearance that they had slopped it through the sauce which really is a turnoff for me um, I found that it had a nice flavor to it, but it was so dried out that the sauce didn't help trying to make it a um, wet a anymore. The third one, you know, again, the appearance was that it was dipped through the sauce and it should be kind of a nice flavor, and it did have a nice flavor, but again, it was kind of grainy and chewy. The fourth one had a nice dry rub on the bottom, but unfortunately there wasn't enough meat down there to really get a nice taste of the dry rub. The, and the last one, unfortunately, just was not cooked very well, and it's very stringy. I found the first one to be kind of sweet. I didn't care for it that much. Um, my favorite was the fourth. The third was kind of tough on mine, and the, the last one was very tough. So that's what I think. My number one rib was uh, too much, had too much smoke, and uh, the meat just ripped off the bone, so I didn't particularly like that one. Number two had really good taste, and it was tender. Number three was really sweet, but it was tough. Number four was really, really smoky. And number, and my number five rib, it was had good tenderness, and the the taste was was overall better than any of the other ribs that I had. Okay, <clears throat> for me, um, the first first rib I found to be a little on the dry side, so it wasn't really my favorite. It had good flavor. Second one was a bit moister. Uh, it had a, a little on the. For me, a little salty, but it was still good. The third one, which was probably my favorite, a little tomatoey, but it had good texture. The third, the fourth one, was a little bit dry for me. It's quite smoky, but it was not too bad. And the fifth one was a decent one as well. Uh, I would have probably have rated it the third rib, and then the fifth, you know, the second rib, and then the the fourth one, and then the the first one would be last. Using too much rub because I upped the rub. You 
slices are not pretty like I'm used to. Not if I went. Yeah, that would you go behind this one. I know. I'm trying to make my little cylinder happen. No, you definitely go there. This looks like you go there, though. Oh, perfect. That's why this will work. Keep going, baby. Don't worry about it. Like CSI. It's a jigsaw puzzle. 12.57. This little cutie should be hidden, so you're gonna go back. Five minutes. Nope. So these four are gorgeous. It's going to be it for pull. Is that enough pull? Yeah, oh yeah, plenty. Sauce out with your fingers if you got time. I'm almost done with this mess. Okay, I'm going to put these at the back and come forward with these bad boys. Uh, that should be the front, eh? Mm -hmm. Alrighty. It's your meat. That doesn't mean much anymore. All bets are off. My preference was what's item four here. I don't remember which ones I graded lower. There weren't any others that particularly stood out as favorable. They were negative. You good? Okay. I like the flavors on both the first two entries. What I didn't care for in presentation is it was a very hard, uh, very heavy and dark sauce over the top of the meat, kind of disguising the meat. I always feel that they're going to hide something when they do that, but the flavors were very good when I tasted them. I like four and five equally well. I think they like very good pork flavor, uh, great tenderness. Uh, the one I didn't care for was actually the first one. I had kind of a strange aftertaste at the end, so it didn't do it for me. I think hands down number four. Um, I think the, the flavor profile was right on. Um, I didn't care too much for um, the last one. Um, I didn't really like the presentation. Um, and I wasn't too thrilled with the presentation on the first two. I felt they had a lot of sauce. Um, I think hands down number four was uh, the one uh, I like best. Okay, I like the um, number four myself. Um, overall, the taste was really good. The texture was good. Um, the last one, number five, was my least favorite. Um, this may have been just a piece that I had, but there was a lot of uh, fatty tissue in it, um, and it had more of a bland taste to me. <laughs> you must taste awesome. <laughs> He's like this all the time. Sometimes I'm a dick. Somebody has to have some fun. Yeah, but it's supposed to be me. It's supposed to be you? And you're not having any fun? Well, you weren't, little... you weren't having any fun cutting that bristle, that's for sure. No, I, uh, I was having fun, but my brain um, wasn't. My brain was screaming at me. Is that what that noise was? <laughs> I know I smelled something. <laughs> I don't like it. How yeah, I many you got in there? You got seven Two, there? four, six, seven, number eight. Since you're the spokesman of the box, my friend. We're good? Well, see, your spacing is a little fucking... That's because of the meat. It just suddenly went a little wonky on me. Unwonky!
Make it unlawful. Um, I would. I like the uh, first one. Number one, um, the consistency and the tenderness was very good, and the the number three here was probably the toughest and most overdone. Um, all in all, they were uh, three of the four were fairly good for tenderness, um, and the fibber was good, but nothing really jumped out at me. Okay. I agree with number three. I think that was the driest, uh, whether it was a chunk piece or whether it was the uh, strip piece. Um, my, my number two was a little bit difficult to get apart, but once I got it apart, it was actually quite tender and quite nice tasting. Uh, number one, I thought was a little bit too vinegary for me, but the consistency was good. Number four, I did, I did like number four and number five. Actually, to be very honest, this is some of the best brisket that I've ever had judging. Thank you. Overall, uh, <clears throat> my choice was number one. The others, uh, number three was too tough, uh, and the others I felt were average or below average. I also like number one best and number three least, and <laughs> kind of for the reasons that were, t that were indicated. I found number one very, very good taste and also the tenderness. Uh, didn't melt in your mouth. You knew you were chewing beef, but uh, it was easy to eat. Uh, number three, on the other hand, was dry. Found it hard to pull apart and uh, also hard to bite into and without, uh, well, while enjoying it. <laughs> I'm going to go completely against the grain. My number three was really good. Um, great flavor to it. Um, and texture not too bad at all, so I'd certainly like number three. Um, my number one had a good flavour to it, um, unfortunately too well overdone, very moist, moist and mushy. Um, fortunately the burnt end with it as well, um, far too mushy, um, which detracted away from it. Um, number four and five, good flavour to them, but just too oversauced um, and just dominates the flavour of the meat. Fortunately number two, um, just too tough um, and very, very dry. So out of, out of the five of them I'd definitely go for number three. Well, for me, uh, number one was slightly overcooked, I thought. Number two, a little on the dry side. Um, for me, the three, four, and five were all cooked very, uh, very nicely. Um, as far as flavor, I was really uh, be between uh, three and five as being my favorite. Uh, slight edge to number three. Had a nice smoky taste to it. Thanks.